There's nothing like playing an old classic, a game of your childhood days that reawakens the nostalgic feelings everyone now and then just needs. But nostalgia and denial are both sides of the same coin and while there is still excitement to enjoy, some games just don't age well, be it the controls, camera movement or maybe simply the visuals. Everyone reacts different to flaws and although some people can look behind these mistakes, others cannot. Many players are not particular fans of remakes per se since they take up valuable development time instead of creating a new experience. As true as this may be, I've always liked to experience an old fan favorite of mine with a breath of fresh air and see how the gameplay and graphics transfer into a more modern look. Going by the title of this video, Kirby tends to be surprisingly shy when it comes to reimagining older games. Of course, we got the remake of Kirby's Fun Pack, Kirby's Adventure or several reimaginings of Kirby's Dreamland, but they depict the exception and with over 20 games in the series, it's actually quite surprising to see how restrained Hell acts in regard of older games. If anything, their previous work on Kirby Superstar Ultra or Nightmare in Dreamland were excellent examples of how a proper remake should look like, so why not give it a try again? Here are 4 Kirby games that definitely deserve another try. If there's one game that most of all deserves a remake then it's Kirby and the Amazing Mirror. At first glance there's no reason to, the visuals are still tremendously charming, the gameplay feels great and with the option to choose progress however the player likes, replayability is ensured. But Amazing Mirror is a different case. The main feature of the game was the ability to play with three other people to act independently in the world, so no one had to stick on the same game screen. This was accomplished thanks to the Game Boy Link cable and while the connection could be wobbly sometimes, especially if one of the players suddenly pulls out this cable, we didn't know it better. I think you know what I'm trying to suggest, but now imagine playing Amazing Mirror today. Surely there's no chance in getting four people together to sit down with their tiny Game Boy on the tiny screen to be linked with the cable that could interrupt the connection at any time. It is nice to have the option to play the game on the Wii U eShop, but without the multiplayer a good bunch of the experience gets lost. Meeting one of your partner randomly while traversing through the huge connected world are just the little moments that matter the most. While many suggested remakes to games originate from the idea of modernizing them due to outdated graphics or other seemingly unplayable aspects, Amazing Mirror is one of the few cases where it's necessary because it's not possible anymore to play the game it was intended for today. As I mentioned everything else pretty much aged like fine wine, so updating the visuals, adding an online mode and adjusting the gameplay to the modern style would basically be more than enough. What I exactly mean by adjusting the gameplay is for example the staging of modern Kirby boss fights. Amazing Mirror's bosses were not bad by any means, but it's undeniable how much the battles have evolved over the years and become great spectacles especially in the more recent games. So adding one more phase and different attack patterns to each one would be nothing the series hasn't done before. The final boss comes very close to what I mean and while we're at the final, please make the ending more climactic, it ended rather abrupt. Everything else is up to debate, but by just transferring the multiplayer to modern consoles with the gameplay fine tuning of modern games, the developers wouldn't have to do much work while delivering a great classic and let this game finally mirror the greatness we've lost along the way. Kirby Air Ride is probably the title that most people would agree on. While Kirby was on his way to check off every possible genre there is in existence, it was only a matter of time until he would set his potato feet into a car. In this case, it's his iconic warp star and first and only attempt so far to bring in much needed diversity into the Mario Kart dominated genre. Unlike other clones, Kirby Air Ride pretty much does his own thing and plays completely different from what is known. Instead of pressing a button to accelerate, each car speeds up automatically and can only be stopped by pressing the A button. In doing so, a short boost will be charged up and besides the speed boost it provides, the charge is the main tool to drift or change direction more suddenly. Even the items are adjusted to the classic Kirby gameplay and mainly consist of different enemy types and their copy abilities. These range from fire to sword and don't have as much of an effect on a race as you would expect. It's more the different stars which will make the difference between victory and defeat by having so distinct differences that some of them simply have no chance on certain tracks. The only playable characters other than Kirby are DDD and Meta Knight, which is in regard of the character variety the franchise is known for rather limiting. The the same goes for the tracks and although all of them are great in spectacle and diverse like nothing else, there could be more. The reason behind this are multiple modes, each of them providing completely different gameplay scenarios and just stop with the chit chat. 
Everyone knows there's only one mod that is relevant and that is City Trial. Even people who haven't played this game have at least one time heard of this legendary mode. Maybe it's because Sakurai reused the concept in Smash Run for Smash Bros on the 3DS. What a surprise, that is also everyone's favorite mode of Smash. In City Trial all the players try to boost up their stats in one big world until the times run out and hope to find a proper card. It's just one of these modes that function just by the competitive nature and I think one of the many reasons why this is the case is that everyone can attack anyone at any time. By not knowing which minigame awaits at the end of the round you have to prepare for everything so there's never a round of boredom because you can never be sure how the competition is doing. Kirby Air Ride deserves a remake just because of this mode alone since an online multiplayer would do miracles and truly raise this in living room looked experience to the whole world. Just imagine how many crazy things can happen if playing City Trial with strangers. It's a perfect recipe for fun chaos. And while this alone would be more than enough enough for a reason to give the concept another try, I think of this case as a whole. We are in need of more creative fundraiser and while now and then there happen to be good competition, it's still too less. Kirby Air Ride was so special in its concept that it would have only the genre in common with Mario Kart and it's so simple to make the original better. Work on the controls a little, add way more characters, expand the tracks by a couple ones and just give the game a modern look. Fundamentally speaking, Air Ride has so many great approaches that just need another try to really flesh them out. So by remaking the game not only would we get a great individual fundraiser on its own, but as I said, much more needed diversity in the genre. Ah, there's also the top down mode. This was nice too. What have Mario 64, Zelda Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask or Pokemon Snap in common? They all have either gotten remakes or faithful successors because the shift to 3D is known for being visually aged like fine milk on a summer day. But surprisingly as it is, Kirby 64 never experienced the same treatment, although it always seemed like this should be the Kirby game that deserves it the most, at least from an optical standpoint. The game by itself plays out like a very traditional Kirby platform and features all the mechanics you come to expect at this point. One of the minor but atmospheric changes was the dynamic camera and its habit to constantly shift the perspective in order to create a more lively world and this 2.5D style the game is known for. And while this change of presentation certainly helped to make the level feel like actual places instead of locations created by a level designer, it also showed how poorly the game looked even at its release. By the time Kirby 64 released, the Nintendo 64 already reached its final stage and showed games that looked way better despite being 2 or 3 years older. The only reason why the game somewhat kept an individual charm is the colorful graphics, which automatically aged nicer but can only hide the rough edges to a certain extent. Even copy abilities didn't change Kirby's look and although it probably would have been a good amount of work to create separate costumes for each copy combination, it still makes the main gimmick of the game not as much powerful as it could have been for the first entry on such a powerful hardware at that time. Obviously the backgrounds and graphics overall would benefit greatly from a new look since modern Kirby, especially Star Ally, looks absolutely gorgeous with its flamboyant visuals. And since Kirby 64 places even more particular emphasis on the surroundings in different locations, the developers would have a blast filling each level with all sorts of details and little discoveries. It could even go beyond this concept and feature maybe a hidden object side mode game, where you have to look at a screenshot from a random level and have to find something notable or a mistake. Kirby games love to have these extra modes and still target children, so having a little extra mode that could be enjoyed by younger ones and bring players to pay more attention to their surroundings in the adventure would even give the developers more of a reason to depict the dynamic view as something special. Staying with the theme of expanding the visuals, every copy ability would naturally get individual designs, which by itself isn't something special at this point. The interesting part would be the combinations and they could be tackled with the modern gameplay. As it stands now, abilities normally consist of multiple attacks and different movesets which could be transferred into the copy combinations to give them even more variety. The only concern I see in this enhancement is how this would probably complicate things too much, because every base ability needs to be rather lackluster in order to motivate the players to try out combinations. The controls would need some work as well since it feels unusual heavy to move Kirby around. I understand that this adds to the more challenging difficulty in comparison to other Kirby games, but they would find a way to keep the state while making the moment more dynamic. And to be honest, for certain the game would get easier, it's naturally just given at this point. If there's one thing not everyone knows, 
levels is how different playable characters were planned. There actually remains of this idea. You could play as DDD for some sections, but it would be amazing to finally see this concept realize and let us play not only with the King, but Wardle D and Adeline as well. And probably the best thing about the remake would be to see how the Zero Two fight could look with modern graphics. The atmosphere was already so massive in the original to a point where I think the old hardware contributed to it, but Zero Two is one of the few enemies which is not forgotten yet left out in most modern games, so finally seeing his red eye is something every fan dreams of. The last place is reserved for a special minigame collection where many rather forgotten Kirby spin-offs, especially from the past, like Kirby Pinball or Blockball, could get the time to shine without being realized to a full game. Because today it's sadly hard to justify a full release of something like Pinball. So in order to give the impression of a complete package, they can tie them up to one. It would be similar to Kirby's Fun Pack, where the game consisted of multiple side adventures instead of one. There were actually some attempts on that idea, like the Pinball minigame in Kirby Mass Attack, where we could get a little glance how modern Kirby Pinball makes a great figure and still holds up for what it tries to achieve. And if this still isn't enough for a whole retail release on its own, the developers really like to create short experiments and release them on the eShop, like Super Clash or Fighters 2. This possibility really gives them the free room to stretch out their legs a little more, since they don't have to worry to try out smaller things without being scared it doesn't vindicate the costs. Smaller games deserve a place in today's landscape too, even by bigger teams, so while often remake suggestions only are applied to rather big classics from the past, it's the little games that also deserve another shot. These are the games that I think deserve a remake the most. If I had to choose at least one of them, I would probably take The Amazing Mirror since it's the only one to not being able to provide the experience it tried to create many years ago. But maybe you think like that about another game, which is why you should go and tell me what games you think should be remade. Now excuse me, I think an event is about to happen in City Trial. No, not again!